chapter 25. Ma and Bob found the days without Minley long and difficult. In the morning, as soon as they woke up, they rushed to Minley's bed to see if she was there. In the afternoon, they hurried from the fields, hoping to find Minley waiting at home. And at night, with a rice bowl and a set of chopsticks waiting for it, for her at the table, they looked up at every sound of footsteps. But an empty bed and house always greeted them, and the footsteps always belonged to a passing neighbor. While Ma's anger had disappeared with the goldfish man, she grew a little thinner and paler every day, and Ba's eyes no longer twinkled. And one evening, in the middle of the night, Ba woke up alone in bed to a voice calling, Wake up, old man, the fish said. Wake up! Your wife needs you! Ba quickly rose and looked to Ma, who was sitting by Minley's bed. In the still of the darkness, Ma shook with sobs. Oh, wife, Ba said softly, sitting next to her. Ma turned to him, her face shiny with wet tears. What if Minley never returns, Ma said. What if we are always without her? Ba put his hand over his face, brushing away the tears that were forming in his eyes. I don't know, he said. Neither do I. Ma said as she buried her face in Minley's bed, crying in despair. Ba stroked her hair as she wept, occasionally closing his eyes as he fought his own gloom. Finally, as Ma's crying slowed and, ba and calmed, Ba said, Do you remember the story I told you about the paper of happiness? And the secret, which was one word written over and over again? The back of Ma's head nodded and Ba allowed himself a small smile. I have thought a long time about what that word could have been, Ba said. Was it wisdom or honor, love or truth? For a long time, I like to think that the word was kindness. Ma's face remained hidden in Minley's bed, but her sobs had stopped, and Ba knew that she was listening. But now, Ba said, I think perhaps the word was faith. A faint gray light seeped into the room and as if the moon as if the moon was escaping from the clouds. Ma lifted her head and looked at Ba again. She wiped her eyes with her sleeve and gave him a small sad smile. Perhaps, she said, perhaps you are right. And she placed her hand wet with tears in his. Chapter 26 The next morning, Minley woke up under a heavy, rich blanket. Even though she was on the floor of the garden pagoda, she had slept comfortably. And as she sat up, she realized that, that she realized that was probably due to the silk pillows she had been laying on. The soft sunlight cast leaf shadows across her face, and the wind made gentle ripples in the moss-colored lake in front of her. The Imperial Garden was just as beautiful in the day as it was by night. On one side of her lay a small table with a small pot of tea, a bowl of rice porridge, and tea-stained eggs. Breakfast, Minley thought to herself. But before she reached for it, she saw a yellow brocade traveling bag laying on the other side of her. Inside the bag, Man Minley found her humble blanket, her rabbit rice bowl with needle and bamboo pieces, chopsticks, a generous supply of cakes, and her hollow gourd filled with fresh water. On the very top lay the gold-threaded pouch that held the ripped page of fortune. Minley took the pouch and held it with two hands. Well, I have the borrowed line, Minley thought. At least, I hope it is. So after a quick breakfast, Min Lee quietly left the pavilion. Part of her was tempted to explore the mosaic walkways through the jewel-colored leaves, but she knew being discovered by one of the king's counselors would be disastrous. Also, she knew Dragon was patiently waiting outside the city. 
So, using the king's secret door, Min Lee carefully left the garden and walls of the inner city. And when she was out of the garden, Min Lee realized it was very early in the morning. The outer city was still sleeping. The stands were bare and the umbrellas were closed. Quickly, Min Lee scurried to the gate. With great effort, she was able to get through. She had to use a metal pole she'd found on the ground to lift the lock and the lever of one of the doors open. Even then, she was only able to get it open a crack and had to squeeze through. As she fell through the gate, gasping for air, she was shocked to see Dragon lying in front of the stone lions, sleeping. It took a couple of prods before Dragon woke. His loud morning yawns almost put Min Lee in a panic, but they were able to get back into the hiding shelter of the forest before anyone saw them. What were you doing by the city? Min Lee asked. You were supposed to stay hidden. I was getting the borrowed line, Dragon said. What do you mean, Min Lee said. I have the borrowed line. And in a rush, the two of them told each other about their night adventures. Dragon stared at the ripped page from the book, and Min Lee looked at the red cord in Dragon's hand. So, which is the real borrowed line? Dragon asked Min Lee. I guess that is another question we will have to ask the old man of the moon, Min Lee said. <laughs>